Beheaded, betrayed, misunderstood, Anne Boleyn remains an enigma 500 years after her dramatic downfall. As wife to King Henry VIII, she was either a shrewd seductress or an innocent pawn, depending on who you ask. Her swift rise to power and even swifter demise marked a pivotal moment in Tudor history. But behind the tabloid headlines lies a complex woman who has captured our imagination for centuries. Welcome to Bizarre History. Today we examine seven crazy facts you didn't know about Anne Boleyn. Among the chain of events leading to Anne Boleyn's destruction lay a particularly ironic unintended consequence, the instairment of Frances Weston in her fall from grace. When musician Mark Smeaton was arrested and interrogated in April 1536, mass arrests followed with Anne herself imprisoned and accused of adultery and incest. While confined in the Tower of London, Anne spoke candidly of conversations with Smeaton and Henry Norris, unaware her statements were being documented for King Henry. Faithfully, Anne also mentioned Frances Weston, a popular courtier, once professing love for her. Though uninvolved in inquiry thus far, this lone admission sealed Weston's fate. At Anne's own inadvertent words, he was arrested and executed, alongside four other men just days before her own beheading. With one casual, unaware implication, Anne set in motion his demise, an unintended casualty in the campaign against her. However unjust, her candid revelations enabled the merciless forces arrayed against her to ensnare yet another in the bloody purge. Though likely the mere product of courtly flirtation rather than genuine misconduct, Anne's reference to Weston's admiration bore lethal consequences for his life and legacy. Through her own ruin, she had unwittingly compounded the tragedy by dragging down others in her wake. An intriguing genealogical link exists between Anne Boleyn and her infamous successor Jane Seymour. The two were actually second cousins. Anne's mother, Elizabeth Howard, was the first cousin of Jane's mother, Marguerite Wentworth. The two young cousins were raised together at Sheriff Hutton Castle in Yorkshire, under the guardianship of Elizabeth's mother. There, both Elizabeth and Marguerite first bloomed into womanhood, attracting the poetic admiration of John Skelton. He extolled the teenage Elizabeth as lusty to look upon, pleasant, demure, and sage, while praising Marguerite as benign, courteous, and meek. Though Faith later pitted their daughters, Anne and Jane as rival queens vying for the caprice affections of King Henry VIII, traces of her mother's girlhood kinship endured. Evidence suggests both Anne and Jane maintain a close relationship with their mutual cousin, Sir Francis Byron, who helped secure Jane's first court appointment. Yet any bond between the two cousins themselves faded amidst their competition to bear Henry his long-sought male heir. Their mother's early lives entwined at Sheriff Hutton Castle before divergence down more distant branches of the family tree, foreshadowing the intricate web of relations enmeshing the Boleyn and Seymour families in both rivalry and blood. While the life of Anne Boleyn's sister Mary remains shrouded in mystery, one provocative possibility has fascinated historians, that she may have born King Henry VIII an illegitimate child. As scholar Susan Lipscomb reviewed, Mary conducted a discreet affair with the married king while wed to William Carey. Though Mary's son Henry Carey is not likely Henry's, historian Alice Weir raised the startling theory that her daughter Catherine Carey may have been the monarch's illicit offspring. While only one malicious rumor from a single vicar substantiates this, Weir asserts it remains a strong possibility. The evidence cannot evaluate the claim beyond speculation. Yet the prospect underscores the shadowy untold possibilities veiled by the court's secrecy. That Mary may have delivered the king his own bastard child exemplifies the complex web of passion and betrayal which she navigated as Anne Boleyn's less notorious sister. Though unverified, the mere suggestion that Catherine Carey could secretly be the fruit of Mary Boleyn's affair with Henry VIII underscores the intrigue and rumor saturating the Tudor court. 
While Anne Boleyn's notorious status as King Henry VIII's mistress and eventual wife is well documented, more shadowy rumors also implicated her mother Elizabeth Howard in sharing the king's bed. Though Anne's sister Mary openly became Henry's lover years before, whispers circulated suggesting the Boleyn matriarch had also been seduced by the lusty monarch. In 1533, Elizabeth Amatus publicly accused Thomas Boleyn of pandering both wife and daughters to satisfy Henry's appetites. More alarmingly, Sir George Throckmorton boldly told the king it was believed he had meddled with both mother and sister of Anne. Even more scandalously, the 16th century Jesuit Nicholas Sander alleged Anne herself was Henry's illegitimate child by Elizabeth. Despite Henry's denial of intimacy with the Boleyn matriarch when confronted, the hints of impropriety tainted public perceptions of the family. While Elizabeth's elder age made such affairs with the king improbable, the gossip suggests she may have tread a precarious line between propriety and permission as her daughters became Henry's paramours. In an English court rife with rumor and plots, even unwarranted whispers could blight reputations. For the shrewd matriarch Elizabeth Howard, the circulating accusations of trysts with the king, unfounded or otherwise, singled the intense scrutiny and contempt the Boleyns faced in their dizzying yet dangerous ascent to power. The formidable Boleyn family traced their roots back to the modest Norfolk village of Sale. Early ancestors were simply peasant farmers, occasionally running afoul of manorial laws by encroaching on the Lord's lands in search of vital resources. Yet ambition ran strong in the family, propelling their gradual ascent over generations. Patriarch Godfrey Boleyn leveraged his moderate means to establish his younger son in London as a hatter in the 1430s. This second Godfrey prospered in his trade, joining London's esteemed Mercer's Company and growing growing wealthy enough to serve as Lord Mayor by 1457. Shrewd marriages also aided the Boleyn climb, with Godfrey taking the daughter of a baron as his second wife. The acquisition of Blickling Manor further cemented the family's gentry status. Step by step, the Boleyns elevated themselves from common Norfolk villagers to respected nobility through equal parts fortune and cunning. By the time Anne Boleyn, Godfrey's descendant, caught the roving eye of King Henry VIII, the family had long left their humble rural origins behind. Yet those ambitious peasant roots lent them the relentless drive to scheme and charm their way to the heights of power at court. Their meteoric rise was built on generations of proud self-improvement from modest beginnings to elite influence. By Anne's birth, the Boleyns had become a family to be reckoned with. Queen Anne Boleyn was not the sole Anne of prominence within the Boleyn family's corridors of power. The popular name threaded through multiple generations, with Anne Hu being one of the first to bear it in the 16th century. Anne Boleyn could also claim an aunt named Lady Anne Shelton, who became appointed to serve little Princess Elizabeth alongside her sister Alice Boleyn. Despite their kinship, Lady Shelton found herself tasked with overseeing the Queen's defiant stepdaughter Mary, who refused to acknowledge Anne's royal marriage to Henry VIII. When Anne ordered her aunt to cease a addressing Mary by her princess title, even commanding she slap her face as the cursed bastard she was, Lady Shelton recoiled. Fearing accusations of poisoning the girl, she gradually befriended her young charge instead. This perceived betrayal helped estrange the two Anne's in the months before the Queen's dramatic downfall in 1536. No longer united by name and blood, Lady Shelton's loyalty to the fallen Princess Mary over Anne Boleyn signaled the diverging fates of the Anne Boleyns at court. For a brief, tumultuous period, two Anne's jostled for prestige and preference within the king's inner circle, only to have their fortunes irrevocably split by accusation and execution. In the end, only one Anne Boleyn would retain rank and favor while the other bowed to new masters. Prevalence of Anne's within the Boleyn family underscores the name's popularity, yet only one would bear it as queen for that fleeting, fateful period. 
In the summer of 1528, the dreaded sweating sickness infiltrated Henry VIII's court, striking terror into the king's heart. This pernicious disease would kill a previously healthy victim within hours, its onslaught marked by profuse sweating. When Anne Boleyn's lady-in-waiting was abruptly taken ill, Henry fled in a panic, retreating nearly 12 miles away from possible contagion. Showing no chivalry towards his supposed beloved Anne, the frantic king commanded her sent immediately home to have her castle Kent. Within days, Anne too exhibited the telltale sweats and chills, along with her father. Confined to her bed, she endured extreme discomfort and fear, unsure if each moment might be her last as the sickness racked her body. Though Henry dispatched his second best doctor to attend her, given the disease's grim reputation, Anne had no guarantee of surviving its grasp. The treatment provided meager comfort as she alternately sweated and shivered, her very life hanging precariously in the balance. Meanwhile, her brother-in-law, William Carey, succumbed, among many other courtiers felled by the epidemic. After several harrowing days battling the deadly illness, Anne began slowly recovering, spared the fate of so many others. She had come closer than ever before to the shadow of death, experiencing firsthand the frailty of the human condition, even for those enjoying the king's favor. Her survival was a matter of providence and luck for no effective cure existed to combat the sweating sickness's lethal whims. If you want more of history's long-held secrets and darkest confessions, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. From us at Bizarre History, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.